seminar and workshop you organize for our postgraduate students, they will be equipped with the relevant skills to compete for competitive grants after school. In conclusion, I want to thank our provost, Professor Christian Jare, for his immense support for the graduate education. If I when this idea came, uh, we submitted a budget of 100,000 to him. He said, Prof, that's a fortune, but the college is ready to do it. So a clap for him, please. I would also like to thank, uh, thank our pro vice chancellor, who is a proud alumnus of this college. When I call him on the phone and ask him if he can give us the keynote address, without looking at his calendar, he said, Prof, if my college is asking me to do something, can I say no? And I'm told he has a meeting. As, I, as we talk now, he's supposed to chair a meeting, but he's here with us. Pro vice chancellor, we thank you very much. And finally, we'd like to thank our vice chancellor. Professor Ms. Rita Akusha Dixon, if I went I contacted her, she said, Prof, the timing is wrong. Otherwise, I would love to be part you know, of this program. As I talk to you now, she is at Kipkus, but her spirit is here with us. I also thank you, graduate students, for your participation. I mean, looking at the, looking at the numbers, it is marvelous. Thank you very much for coming. I wish you all a productive and please enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Deborah. Well, I, I think, can you hear me at the back? <laughs> Kindly move forward. I can see a lot of people standing. There are so many seats in front. So kindly move forward. You don't need to stand where there are empty seats here. Can we have the ushers usher them? Kindly move forward. Am I so audible? Is it better? Okay, thank you. And whilst we have our students move forward, let's acknowledge some of the high profile people who have joined us this morning. First of all, let's acknowledge our Pro VC. Research, our best mid career research, our best distinguished research, our best research leadership, best college in terms of research, best research center, and other awards. I'm encouraging all of us to bear in mind of these days. Finally, let me also uh, thank the organizing committee once again for putting such a wonderful, a wonderful conference. Can we applaud them for doing that? And let me, in conclusion, congratulate the College of Health Sciences for this initiative. Um, I like what my very good friend, Prof. Debra, said that the college is the pace setters when it comes to research and grantsmanship. Um, I think the data may speak to that. I pray and hope that our postgraduate students will take full advantage of this conference and get feedback on the various researches that you are doing. We believe in the kind of work you are doing, and we pray that the two, good, the two days will be very good in terms of getting feedback to enrich the various research that you are doing. On that note, I say thank you all, and God richly bless us all. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think whilst he was delivering his speech, we have Professor Yao Edusa Kodia join us, former provost for the College of Health Sciences. Good morning, sir. I think the moment we have all been waiting for. Let me give a brief introduction to our keynote speaker for the morning. Professor Ellis Owusu Dabo, the Pro Vice Chancellor for KNUSD. He's a professor for epidemiology and global health at the School of Public Health here at KNUSD. He holds a medical degree from here and a PhD from the University of Nottingham in the UK. Professor Ellis Osudabo is a consultant for public health and a, a 
a physician, of course, he's the pro VC, he's a university teacher and a researcher. As a professor of epidemiology and global health, his area of expertise is in medical epidemiology and applied public health technologies. He has a good publication track record and has secured and managed large research grants from reputable principal granting institutions. His passion is in building capacities of next generation scientists and health systems to help solve African health problems through scientific research collaboration. If it will not be too much trouble, can we all please be upstanding as we welcome our keynote speaker for the morning, with a round of applause, of course. Thank you so very much. Colleagues, please resume your seats. Provost of the College of Health Sciences. Other provosts that are here present, past provosts, directors, deans, heads of department of our cherished college, esteemed faculty, distinguished professors, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to give the keynote address on this maiden edition of our scientific conference, targeted at our graduate students. Our university is a research intensive one. The people who drive research are graduate students and their lead faculties. Scientific conferences are ideal platform for graduate students to present their research work, discuss some of the outcomes of their research work, and to receive feedback from experts in the field. Additionally, I think we're, yes, give me a few seconds to see how this thing responds. All right, I think something is happening. Okay, so I think we'll get there. Additionally, postgraduate students can receive valuable feedback from experts who can help guide their research. Let me place on record my appreciation to the planning committee as earlier indicated, led by Professor Alexander Yao Debra and his team for giving me this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you. This will be the outline of my presentation. Look at some overview in scientific innovation and academic excellence. I'll look at the current state where we are and where we'd like to go. And I'd like to challenge us on how do we know that we have arrived when we get there by looking at some of the few challenges that we do have. And then I shall conclude. The act establishing the university defines its mandate, which essentially is to provide higher education, undertake scientific research, disseminate knowledge, and foster relationships with the outside world, including all our stakeholders. The strategic mandate of the university is derived from her name, science and technology. On this note, I would like to take this opportunity seriously and to share some key thoughts on the theme which you have presented to me, scientific innovation and academic excellence, the hallmark of the graduate education. Scientific innovation and academic excellence have a dual impact on each other. As we navigate through the rapidly evolving world, it is essential to recognize how these two concepts impact each other. One may describe the impact or the relationship between the two by using the word synergism. Scientific innovation impacts academic excellence whilst academic excellence would lead to 
or should lead to scientific innovation. Scientific innovations are successful exploitations of new ideas to generate new technologies, products, and processes. In other words, they are inventions that change scientific research practices or systems in significant ways. These innovations include areas in virtually all disciplines in our academic world. Health, engineering, agriculture, and so on and so forth. Some examples of uh, scientific innovations in health, for example, may be applicable or may be uh, extrapolated in areas like artificial intelligence, 3D printing, flipped classrooms, virtual reality, data science, augmented reality. There's so many areas that we can apply scientific innovations and academic excellence. They have helped to shape the world and improve general well-being. SDG 3. What is the current state of affairs as far as our scientific innovations in Africa is concerned. Africa lags in research and innovation. With only 2% of the world's research output and 1.3% of scientific research spending. Both input and output are low. That is something that we all both faculty, supervisors, graduate students, all of us would have to reflect on. And I apologize for this uh, bad uh, picture, but this was to show you the global leaders innovation in 2022. And this was meant, I don't know whether you can sharpen this a little bit, uh, whoever is uh, behind the, the console, but you will see that when it comes to the top three innovations, you know, you always find these things in the global north. It's at the top three. Um, just slightly, okay. So if you look at the top three innovation, okay, by economies in terms of income groups, and if you look at the high income groups, you have Switzerland, you have the United States, and then you have Sweden, okay? Um, if you just prop, just, uh, yeah, there. And then if you were to look at the upper middle, you have China, Bulgaria, Malaysia. And then if you were to look at the lower middle income countries, you have India, Vietnam, Iran. And then, of course, at the very low, you can see who is here and what the leader is doing at the moment to, to spearhead this. And, and, and you will see that the strategy will work. We just have to give it a bit of time. 20, 25, 50 years, the strategy will work. And I'll tell you what China did in the course of my presentation. So both input and output are low for our continent. However, there are some examples of scientific innovations here in Africa that have shaped the continent, such as precision oncology, the use of mama poop jacket designed to record audio of a child's breathing via a modified stethoscope inserted into a wet uh, a, a vest. Live straw, a simple portable device that uses a mesh fiber to filter out bacteria and parasites commonly found in contaminated water. The use of uh, 3D printing, as I indicated earlier, to create low cost uh, prosthesis for people with disabilities across the continent, and the implementation of mobile health technologies in various fields in health. And indeed, in our own university, there are groups here that have spearheaded the use of mobile phone technologies as applied to health. Intellectual property is a surrogate for the measurement of scientific innovations and academic excellence. Africa's contribution to intellectual property at the last count was definitely less than 3% of the global 
intellectual property and scientific innovations. Despite these and the prospects that Africa does have, a major challenge we face is the generational and protection of intellectual property. Globally, Ghana is ranked 39th with a score of 40.88 points, which shows that there is room for improvement for sure. The generation of scientists and researchers must contribute to enhancing our intellectual property environment through scientific innovations and technology-driven tangibles. On the positive side, intellectual property helps to foster a culture of creativity, curiosity, and collaboration. What I call the three C's among researchers and innovators. Intellectual property can facilitate knowledge sharing, technology transfer, and cross-sectoral partnerships that can enhance the quality and impact of scientific innovation on the negative side, though, Intellectual property can paradoxically stifle creativity and diversity in innovation, especially when there are excessive or inappropriate forms of protection. IP can create monopolies or lock-in effects that can reduce competition and innovation. Intellectual property can also limit the freedom and flexibility of researchers and innovation to experiment, adapt, and or improve existing technologies. Professor Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the meantime, academic excellence is the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Some indicators of academic excellence are publishing research articles, not in predatory generals. Applying critical thinking and problem solving skills, producing original and high quality research work, understanding the subject matter deeply, using that knowledge in the real world solutions and to provide solutions to our communities. And of course, sometimes, you may be selected for prestigious awards, as may happen next week, hopefully for some of you during the research week. These indicators reflect not only the academic achievements of our students, but also their potential to contribute to society by solving simple societal problems, sometimes using complex complex scientific manipulations. Professor Chair, creating an environment that fosters academic excellence is crucial for our students to develop their intellectual, social, and ethical growth, and to pursue successful and fulfilling careers. By integrating university-wide learning outcomes through curricular review, we can help our students develop critical thinking professionalism, physical and emotional health, diversity and inclusion to transform their lives. And I'm hoping that this will be our aims as graduate studies. For some of you, you will eventually end up joining us as faculty. This is what we believe in. Beyond the classroom learning, we can also offer students opportunities for internships, with industry, and particularly for us, the service industry, and projects within local businesses and organizations, service and experiential learning, applied learning, and scholarly activities. These experiences allow students to use their knowledge in the real world to solve problems and to develop practical skills and competencies that will be useful in their future careers. At the least, it allows students to be in tandem with industry. Engaging the community in a reciprocal dialogue through artistic, academic, and service activities is another way to promote academic excellence. 
by interacting with professionals in their field. Students can gain insights into the latest trends and developments as far as their fields are concerned. This will help them to shape their ideas, the research ideas, and prefer solutions as far as the research learning outcomes are concerned. This can help us identify areas for improvement and provide opportunities for faculty and staff to enhance their teaching methods and strategies. Professor Chair, another critical factor for promoting academic excellence is providing access to modern facilities. Some of the equipment that we have in this university we know are so old that when students finish and then they go back to the industry that use these equipment and technologies, the students are sometimes 20 years behind industry. Truth? Is that true? Yeah. These resources can help students keep up with the latest developments in their field and equip them with the skills and knowledge they need for their chosen careers. Having worked as a consultant, public health physician, scholar and educator in this field, I have witnessed the transformative power of scientific innovation and academic excellence. And the reason why I applaud you for choosing this theme for this particular scientific conference. So I'll share a few thoughts on where we want to go. I've mentioned some of the scientific innovations that we in Africa have developed. There are many, 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 many more. But of course, when it comes to global representation, it is clearly on the low side, as I indicated earlier. These are some of the scientific examples of scientific innovations that we have in Africa. Share here indicators of ex academic excellence, which I just took you through. And I want to share with you a few thoughts on where we would like to go. I mentioned about community uh, uh, engagement and how it is important that we bring our communities along with us. If, you, if you're a researcher, a scientific researcher, you're an innovator, you're achieving academic excellence, and the communities that you're researching do not benefit from you or that you don't solve the problems that they have, then your value is suspect. Research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. This is by Albert Groggy. Students must also do their part by setting goals, having a positive attitude, managing their time, reading their textbooks and course materials, attending lectures, and I mean being physically present, whether virtually or face-to-face, -face, right in front of us like you're doing now, Taking notes and preparing for exams, not allowing somebody to impersonate you, and to ensure that you write the exams yourself. In this university, we have arrested students who were writing exams for others in this university. It brings to bear the question of originality when you finish and you have the certificate. Are you original? Does the certificate reflect your competencies? The amount of piracy that goes on is unbelievable. And we are aware of that. We are aware that there are contract, contract writers, contract uh, thesis writers, uh, some, some students come to, to do their defense and it is difficult for them to answer basic research questions that they themselves have put their names as the author of the thesis.
Thank you, Provost. That was a, a, a good one. Professor Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as graduate students or early career researchers, you are uniquely positioned to pursue scientific innovations, ask the relevant questions, and challenge existing paradigms. But innovation alone is not enough. To truly make an impact, we must also strive for academic excellence. That's the point I've been making. This requires rigorous research adherence to ethical standards, as I've in a few moments ago demonstrated, and a commitment to communicating our findings clearly and effectively to the wider world. And I'm assuming that in the course of this week, we'll have our students do that. How then can we cultivate a culture of scientific innovation and academic excellence in graduate education? There are no easy answers, but I believe that there are several key principles that can guide us. One of the ways we can do this is by prioritizing mentorship and collaborative research. Mentorships and collaborations are essential for cultivating a culture of scientific innovation and academic excellence. However, there are a few challenges that exist. Most of our curriculum in this university and many tertiary institutions in Africa are theory-based. Very limited practical and skills orientation and competencies with a checklist that ensures that you've actually done it. Theory based. Resources are scarce and we are know, we are aware, especially in these times where we are in austerity and there are so many conditionalities that confront us. In fact, last week they came to uh, disconnect the main administration, ECG came to do, the, uh, came to do that last week um, and KNUSC's electricity bill per month is in the range of four point something million. One month, KNUST. So what it means is that the monies that we were using to support the purchases of equipment and other things now would have to be channeled into the payment of these utilities. Fasten your seatbelt. There are limited laboratories, bench, studios for the sort of work that we want to do. We're also aware that the systems are really weak. The systems that we have in place are weak. And of course, the recent pandemic showcased our weak systems. Science is a collaborative enterprise and the path to scientific discovery is paved with the contributions of many. The quote is by Michael Bishop. Mentorship is a two-way street that requires active engagement, active engagement and collaboration between mentors and mentees. You as postgraduate students need the guidance and the support of experienced mentors who can help you navigate the challenges of research, writing, and other aspects of career development. We as mentors must be willing to invest our time and resources in the next generation by cloning ourselves so that they can replace us when we are gone as leaders in scholarships and innovations. Obviously, the quality of mentorship is key for scientific innovations and academic excellence. By engaging in collaborative research projects, joint publications, and peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities, we can create a supportive and enriching environment for all. Another way we can cultivate a culture of scientific innovation and academic excellence is by embracing diversity and inclusivity. Diverse environments foster innovation, open our minds to the rest of the world, where different perspectives and experiences can come together to create new insights and prefer solutions. We can achieve this through international efforts, deliberate, targeted, and ensuring that we have direct 
collaborations with institutions of mutual interests. This has to be intentional and deliberate. We need to ensure that we have efforts that recruit and retain diverse postgraduate students, also including international students. The proportion of international students that we have for KNUSC is 1%, just under about 1%, 1 just 0.97, so make it 1%. I'm yet to disaggregate that on the basis of undergraduate and, and postgraduate, but we know that it's largely driven by the undergraduate population, and I don't want to give any estimation. But what it means is that we need to also be intentional about attracting international graduate students. Moreover, we must remain aware of the real world implications of our work, which is the driving force behind our research and problem solving efforts for humanity. As early career researchers, we may sometimes get distracted by the details of research and theory. However, we should never forget that our work can make a real difference in people's lives, whether we are developing new treatments for diseases, improving existing public health technologies and policies, or advancing our understanding in the natural world. We should always be mindful of the real world impact of our work and make positive contribution. Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates our world. Louis Pasteur. Lastly, we must be willing to take risks and embrace failure. Some of the people that you've seen with innovations with, and, the, and the consequential accruals sometimes in money, did not just start and saw success at just one try. Failure is not a setback. It is a learning opportunity, a chance to refine our ideas and approaches and ultimately to achieve greater success. We should not be afraid to take risks and to question the existing paradigms. We must embrace failure as an essential part in our quest for scientific innovations and academic excellence. So what do we do? Taking you through a few key principles to scientific innovation and academic excellence. We need to invest in systems it's very important. Those of you who know where, why China has become a threat, China has become a threat because decades, a few decades back, they decided to invest in human resource capacity building. What they did was that they sent their students, and targeted the creme de la creme of academic institutions, paid for them to go. And they studied different concepts, different disciplines, and so on and so forth. Governments paid for them to go. And when they finished, they went back to China. I don't have the data on how many Ghanaians go outside this country and don't return. It was a deliberate effort to make sure that we will do X. And there was a conscious effort, very intentional, by the government. So Oxford, the Cambridge, the MITs, the Harvards, and then when they finish, go back. <laughs> Very deliberate. And over time, they picked the intellectual properties. You know, they picked, they picked, they picked them. So when you start, you feel, like, oh, this is Chinese, it's not good, this is Chinese, it's not good. Okay, all right, watch them for the next 15 years, 20 years. The same Chinese products. In fact, tell me, perhaps the only thing that we, have, we don't see around is, is a, a, an example of a human being made in China. Everything else, if not assembled, that's it. Unfortunately for the West, they saw human resource capacity there, and because the labor cost was low and cheap, 
They sent all their intellectual property there. And what did China do? They stole them. I use my words. Uh, they learned. They learned. They didn't steal them. They learned. They learned. Science is the acceptance of what works and the rejection of what does not. That needs more courage than we might think. This is by Jacob Bronowski. So we need to invest. Focus on tangibles. Okay? And I've talked about collaborations. Mentorships. Embrace diversity, inclusivity. The enforcers. And I've just given you the examples of China. Human capacity. There's no point bringing an equipment that nobody can use. So what it means is that we have to be systematic, deliberate, intentional, and build capacities in areas that we want to leverage our existing strengths. Modern facilities, equipment, advanced technologies. So oftentimes, some people finish their PhDs, whatever, and when they come back, the systems that were in place, they can't find them. And getting competitive funding is also not easy. Even if when you get one, by the time it's about to finish, getting another one to sustain is not easy. Because there's no deliberate attempt to fund research and development in this country. Zero. So I've talked about the role of postgraduate studies, setting your goals, having a positive attitude, time management, reading textbooks, and of course I've talked about the ethical behavior of making sure that you are original and that the certificate you have belongs to you and that you have built substantial competencies in those certificates that reflect who you are. So, what sort of Africa do we want? What sort of Africa do we want? Every year, KNUST produces thousands of graduates. For instance, in the year 2022, a total of 4,380 postgraduate students graduated from KNUST. In the meantime, the percentage of postgraduate students in this university is under 12%, about 11.7%. And some of us are of the view that if you want to be research intensive, the minimum postgraduate population that you should have should be 30%. And some of us are of the view that of that 30%, the ratio should not change as we have it now. Humanities have about 66% of the total postgraduate population when science and technology, direct science and technology, is around 30-something percent. We think the reverse must be the case. Our mandate from GTEC is 60-40 at the least. And KNUC has set a target of 90-10. As graduates, you have the potential to be leaders in academic excellence and scientific innovation. You must embrace the challenges that I have mentioned earlier as postgraduate uh, students and dedicate yourselves to achieving excellence through hard work and commitment. By applying creativity, intellectual curiosity, and a spirit of innovation to your research and academic work, you can make significant contributions to society and scientific advancement. However, many students, including academics, fail to achieve the higher level of academic excellence despite the joy, self-satisfaction, and accomplishment, and certainly the benefits that come with it. Several reasons may account for this, Professor Chair. As the postgraduate level, at the postgraduate level, some students are ill-equipped for independent study and resort to dishonest practices such as cheating in exams, as mentioned earlier. And in some cases, they may even hire someone else to do their research work for them. This behavior not only devalues their certificate, but also hinders their ability to contribute meaningfully to society. This problem is worsened by a lack of a clear career plan, inadequate motivation for success and financial difficulties. Furthermore, insufficient time and supervision of research work by faculty, a scarcity of resources for hands-on training, and emphasis on classroom-based learning instead of problems problem-based learning. I know that this college, two years ago, was it two years ago, Provost, that we 
spend time talking about problem-based learning and approaches. So we need to de-emphasize classroom learning and emphasize on problem-based learning. This will help us to contribute to the persistence of the creation of research citizenship and the desire to pursue knowledge. Let me conclude, Professor Chair. How do we make our mark on the globe? How do we make our mark on the globe? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. To conclude, we need to foster a culture of creativity, curiosity, flexibility, and collaboration among our students and researchers to achieve scientific innovation and academic excellence in graduate education. Sometimes when we speak of collaboration, it's as if we're looking at just external collaboration. Sometimes we are next door in the same faculty, in the same department, but the lead scientist doesn't know what the other person is doing. In fact, there's a hackneyed phrase in science that if Mendel had read Robert Koch, our world of science would have been a better place. We need to invest more in infrastructure, equipment, and training for our postgraduate students. We need to give them opportunities within the industry and service, offer them opportunities for exchange programs, and help them to address the challenges and opportunities that face our continent. We need to celebrate and support our innovators and achievers who are making a difference in our fields. And as I indicated earlier, next week we shall celebrate some of those who have consistently showed and showcased research and research output and scientific innovations. Together we can make Africa and Ghana a hub of scientific innovation and academic excellence for the benefit of humanity. Let us all embrace the values of scientific innovation and academic excellence in our work as graduate students, researchers, and educators. To let you know, Africa lacks in research and innovation due to low investments and capacities. The opportunities are there for improvements through graduate training and research. Scientific innovation, of course, in the meantime, has the power to enhance academic excellence while academic excellence can foster scientific innovation. Your scientific idea as a graduate student may be the foray to transforming this great institution. And on that note, I'd like to thank you so very much for your kind attention. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Pravin. As much as that applaud was eh, it's loud, but he deserves a sound innovation for that wonderful presentation. Yes, as a sign of gratitude for that wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Prof. And that was our keynote speaker for the morning. I hope you have taken a few pointers. Have you taken a few pointers? Okay. I know Prof has another major um, item on the program, but uh, since he's been standing for almost an hour, let's give the floor now to the basic school to give us some bit of music. Please be reminded there's a poster session upstairs. Basic school, are you ready?
Let's hear it for the basic school band, KNUST. Thank you very, very much. We'd like to acknowledge some exchange students in our midst. From the University of Brunel, UK, with the lead, Professor Nana Anoche. I think they visited the School of Public Health. Can we hear it for them? Can you give us a wave? Thank you for being here. After this ceremony, there will be the oral presentation. Session A1 will be right here in this auditorium. Session B1 will be upstairs. As I announced earlier, there's also a poster presentation that's currently ongoing. I'd like to invite the Pro Vice Chancellor again, Professor Ellis Ousudabo, to help us with the declaration of the conference. So give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much, Madam Anita. And um, on that note of uh, Arise Ghana Youth for Your Country, and on a note of the challenge of the Provost of the College of Health Sciences, as well as the Chairman of the Planning Committee's charge to us all, and certainly the Director of the Office of Grants and Research, asking us to embrace research and to also participate in next week's university's research week. And seeing the teeming numbers of graduate students that are here today, I, Professor Ellis Ozudab, representing the Vice Chancellor, Professor Mrs. Rita Akusia Dixon of this great institution, do hereby declare that the first edition of this scientific conference targeted at postgraduate students with the theme scientific innovation and academic excellence the hallmark of the graduate students is officially officially what declared announced thank you so very much Thank you very much. We'd like to wish all those uh, presenting the very best of luck. Let me invite Dr. Ya Asantua Osei to give us the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Um, so this morning, we are so glad that we've been able to pull off the first edition of the Postgraduate Week. College of Health Sciences, we do all. We just want to say a big thank you to the Almighty God. He has helped us, he has sustained us, and given us the strength. It has not been easy. The up and downs, are we going to have it? Next semester, this semester, here we are today, having our program. We want to say thank you to God. To our Vice Chancellor, ably represented by our Pro VC. We want to say thank you to our Pro VC himself, who happens to be the keynote speaker. You know, he's shared a lot. And he's also chairing this morning's session. Prof, thank you very much. To our provost and our college management, Prof Christine Ijari, thank you for all the resources you committed to this. We know we've been on you with our budget here and there, and you assured us. So this program has been successful. To our deans, to our HODs, represented here, and those who are not even, you want to say thank you. You've whipped up your students to be here, and we appreciate your efforts so much. The Directorate of Student Affairs is represented here. Dr. Nkansa, thank Prof. Nkansa, thank you. Uh, OGR, want to say thank you so much. Please, to all our senior members who took some time off their busy schedule this morning to come and grace this occasion, want to say thank you very much. To our postgraduate students, we know that when these things are tied to your finishing school, you will be here. But at least you are here. So thank you for also coming. We want to thank all our 
committee, planning committee members. We know yesterday night we were all here trying to make sure this come up. The chair, our able professor, Alice Deborah, thank you so much for the calls, for the test messages, for the reminders. This program is on today. And to our sponsors, we want to say thank you for all the different ways you supported us for this program to be a success. And to our able audience, those who were even passing by, you just had to come and listen, we want to say thank you. To our press, our media men, thank you for taking this out for us. So this morning, we want to say thank you to everyone who is here and um, our basic school band, in fact. You, plus, let's give, let's give them a round of applause. They've done very, very, very well. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doc. So the poster presentation is directly upstairs from this particular auditorium. And uh, they've tied the snack break to it. So yeah. Uh, that's how good organization is. You'll be tempted to see. So please go for your snack and of course enjoy the presentation as well. Please help me welcome back Reverend Professor John Apiapoku to give us the closing prayer. Reverend is forcing me to say a prayer for us all. <laughs> Prof is here. Oh, sister, let me call sister then. Yes, give her a round of applause. This impromptu prayer, dear. If you don't encourage her, but she's here, so. Thank you very much. You've stopped? Oh, clap. <laughs> Thank you. Please shall we be on our feet. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for how far you have brought us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. And we thank you most especially for the wisdom granted to your sons and daughters. Father, we thank you for bringing this morning session to a successful end. As we continue with the poster and oral presentations, we pray that your Holy Spirit will take over and may you grant us the necessary graces that we need, especially the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding that we need to make our world a better place for us all. We ask this and many other blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be upstanding as our dignitaries take leave of us. We'll be taking our photographs at where we had our uh, registration session. So the photographers will be outside waiting for our dignitaries. We'll have faculty members. Um, we'll have the College of Health Sciences. Um, and of course, the planning committee as well, all taking the photographs outside. Please remain standing. We'll just take it here. Vincent, let's take it here. Vincent. We can, we can just take it down here. Pabnoko, can you join? Please let's all join all our invited guests and our dignitaries. Kindly join professors here, deans, directors, provosts. Kindly join planning committee members. Kindly join the photograph. 
Planning Committee members, kindly join the photograph. Planning Committee members. Thank you very much. Don't forget the poster session and snack break is upstairs, just up this particular auditorium. Thank you.